Here's a problem from your books, number 18. You're driving down a road and your speedometer works, but your odometer doesn't work. So you know how fast you're going, but you don't have something keeping track of how far you've gone. Can you estimate how far you've gone? So that's our, gonna be our job here. What we have is a table of ordered pairs, essentially. So the time since you've left, wherever you left from, and your velocity at that exact time. So your friend's taking down the velocity so that nobody's keeping their, nobody's taking their eyes off the road. So can we use this? We have essentially values from a velocity curve, although we don't have a formula for the velocity curve. We have values from a velocity curve. Can we use that? Is that enough to estimate area under velocity curve to find distance traveled? Well, it turns out it is. This is a very common kind of problem you would see and in fact, if we actually knew a formula for the velocity curve, we wouldn't need an approximation because by the time you get to the end of chapter six, you're gonna know how to find the area under any velocity curve, at least with a calculator, exactly. We don't need an approximation. So here, it would be common to have to perform an approximation where we don't have a complete uh, velocity function. So notice this table, it, might, it feels probably a little bit different from what you're used to. Notice that the time values go down like this and the velocities are here. So instead of rows across, you might be more familiar with. Um, this is just notice, we're gonna have to read our table differently. So we've been asked to find both an LRAM and an RAM estimate and average them to approximate how far we've gone over the what two minutes I have 120 seconds so two minutes that we've been driving so here's what we're gonna do you when you do your homework tonight when you do those first four problems you're gonna draw me a picture and draw in every one of these rectangles your goal eventually is to not to need to draw in the rectangles when you do it a rectangular approximation method but we're gonna do it for the first time here so all right so I've drawn in the first several data points what we want to do is start to get, start to understand, get the feeling of what the rectangles are going to look like when we draw them in, so that the next time maybe we won't have to draw them in. So I'm going to start with LRAM. I've been asked to find both LRAM and RAM, but LRAM I'll start with. So my first rectangle, if I have, it's 10 seconds wide, and I know that when time is zero, the velocity is zero. When time is 10, velocity is 44. And you can see I drew those two points in. I'm gonna pick the left-hand one, left-hand part of that interval, left-hand end point of that interval is time equals zero. When time is zero, velocity is zero. I'm gonna make my first rectangle 10 units wide and 10 seconds wide and zero uh, feet per second tall. My second rectangle is gonna cover from 10 to 20. The left-hand endpoint of that interval is time equals 10. So I'm gonna use the velocity value when time is 10, which is up there, and I'm gonna make my second rectangle cover from 10 to 20. And be 44 feet per second tall. My third rectangle covers from 20 to 30. The left-hand endpoint of that is Time equals 20, when time is 20, the velocity is 15. So I have a rectangle 10 seconds wide and 15 feet per second tall. Here, when time is 30, my rectangle is gonna be 35 feet tall, feet per second tall. And you sort of get the idea of how my rectangles are gonna go. So if I'm gonna write that out, you know, how, Actually, you do have to write it out when you take the AP test. So I'll just write for you here. My first rectangle, 10 seconds times the height of zero, plus my second rectangle, 10 seconds wide times the height of 44, plus my third rectangle is 10 seconds wide times the height of 15, plus my fourth rectangle, 10 seconds wide times the height of 35. Now you're gonna have to keep going. This is gonna take 12 rectangles. I'm gonna hide the slide and then show the 
actual calculations I made. I'm going to show the calculations I make for our RAM. I'm going to show you the average, which you can actually already see printed in the video. So if you remember, I was asked to average the LRAM approximation and the RRAM approximation to get my final approximation of distance traveled, which is 3,665 feet. So just notice that for this to have worked, the I needed to multiply the distance across each rectangle, so the width of each rectangle times the height of each rectangle, and I needed the time units to cancel out so that I had distance units left. So that worked out because each rectangle was 10 seconds wide and its height was measured in feet per second. So seconds times feet per second gave me an area that was measured in feet for each rectangle, which I could add up and I had a final estimate of my final distance traveled, which was measured in feet. Notice here the conversion was done for you. When you do problem 17, you're gonna have to do the unit conversion for you. So it's always something important to double check. Make sure that when you multiply your units, you're getting, you're getting units that you need to cancel out to cancel out and you're left with units that make sense for whatever it is you're trying to compute.